Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to this Groove 3 series on Apple Loops. Now, whether you're new to Logic or an experienced user, I think there'll be something for everyone in this series. We're going to take a look at Apple Loops right from the ground up, and I'll spend the first half of the series kind of going over the basics of how they work and how to use them. And then we're going to get into some creative aspects. So let me start by answering the question, what exactly are Apple Loops and why should I care about them? Well, Apple Loops are pre-recorded musical phrases or riffs that we access in the loop browser. Now, that's the simple one-line definition. They can be a lot more than that, but that's the textbook definition of what they are. Now, these loops contain musical patterns, and they can be repeated over and over, and they can be extended or looped to fill any amount of time from a couple of bars till your whole song length, if you want. Now, what's great about Apple Loops is the regions play back at the project tempo. So if they're drum loops, you don't have to worry about the tempo. They'll play back at whatever tempo you need. And for musical material, they'll play back at whatever tempo and whatever key you need. Now, we access Apple Loops in the loop browser. We can get to it from this icon over here. And the shortcut is the letter O to open it. And it's basically a database with search criteria and results in the bottom part here. We have two different views of the search criteria at the top. The results list stays the same. And we can resize this to be a bit wider, which I think I'll do since we're going to be focusing on this. Now, we have four different types of Apple Loops. We have audio Apple Loops, which are blue, like you see here. And we can click on them and audition them. Click again, and it'll stop. And you'll notice that it's auditioning at the project tempo. If I slow this down, it'll play it back slower. and anywhere in between. Now we can drag these onto an existing audio track or we can drag it to an empty space and it'll create an audio track and it'll play it back from the main view. Again, at any tempo we want. Now those are blue Apple Loops. We have green Apple Loops and those are software instrument Apple Loops and they're different in that they can Play back either on an audio track as an audio file or on an instrument track as MIDI. And when we call it up, we call up the sound as well as the notes contained within a region. Now I can drag this to an instrument track and it'll call it up that way, or I can drag it to an audio track and it'll convert it to audio. But let's bring it onto this instrument track and we'll see that when I release the mouse, it calls up the sound and all the necessary settings in order to get the sound. And if we look in the piano roll editor, we'll see that we have basic MIDI notes. And I can transpose one or both of them if necessary. One's in A minor, one's in C, so they sort of kind of work together already as is. And the great thing about these software instrument Apple Loops is that I can now change the sound if I want to play this back on a different sound or with different processing, or I can change the notes if I like the sound but want to change the notes to fit more of my song. Now, the next type of Apple Loops are drummer Apple Loops. They're yellow, and they call up drummer tracks. Now, I can scroll here till I get to some, but I can also use this to filter the different types of loops. And here they are, audio, software instrument, pattern loops, which we'll get to in a moment, and drummer loops. So I'll click there, and now I see only those. And again, I can audition them. And if I drag this to an empty track, it's going to call up a drummer track with the appropriate drummer and settings called up. And then we can play it back and it'll sound just as it did here. And again, we have the flexibility now of changing the pattern, changing the sounds, changing the drummer, or dragging this to an instrument track and getting the MIDI notes so we can edit it. So lots of versatility. These are just starting off points. Now, the next kind are pattern loops. And again, I can scroll till I get to them, but I'm going to use the filters here. I'm going to click there. Now I'm seeing both of those, but I'm going to get rid of the drummer ones. So I see just the pattern loops and they have this little icon that looks like a step sequencer. And some of them are drums. Some of them are pitched. Let's take that and I'll drag this into an empty space. It's going to call up software instrument track. And instead of calling up MIDI notes, it calls up step sequencer pattern. And again, I can play this and transpose or change whatever I need to. 
So there I've dragged four disparate loops, each of different types, and they all kind of sort of work together with a little bit of tweaking. They could be interesting. Now, to get my display back, I can click here and I can go all loops, or I can simply click there to toggle the status, and they'll all come back on. So we can add to the selection by clicking like that, remove. And as soon as you uncheck the last one, they're all back. Or we can, of course, just click all loops. Now, I'm going to end off here, and I just want to mention that if you want to learn more about the step sequencer and patterns, check out the Logic Pro 10.5 and 10.6 update explained series here on Groove 3. There's a lot of detail on it. And if you want to learn more about the drummers and drummer tracks, we have a dedicated series on Logic Pro's drummer here as well. And here's a little tip. If you're into working with drummers and the drummer track, the Loop Browser is a great way to audition the different drummer patterns with their sounds without having to load in the drummer tracks individually. I'll see you for more in the next video.